let's see here. Let me double check. Just make it, oh, we don't want that. That way, all right. Closer. All right. People should be showing up, I think. We'll see what starts happening here in just a moment. Oh. Let's see. One more person. Welcome to HT Bible Study, everyone. Good afternoon, Jean. Uh, we'll wait just a minute to get at, get started here, Suzanne. Good afternoon. Hello, Linda. And Steve. All sorts of people are showing up. This is good. We. Oh, it's Pastor Borkhart. Maybe he'll. He'll help me out. At least he's here, listening. Maybe. Maybe you can learn something, Pastor Borkhart. I'm just kidding. Um, so to start off with, as you're, as we are all gathering, um, boy, this week is an exciting week. Um, not just cause I'm leading Bible, Bible study, but because, uh, this week, uh, is the virtual conference, uh, for higher things. So all sorts of information about that, check that out. I'm sure someone, I don't know who's all here from HT land, but can post some links in the, in the comments about where to get registered and sign up for that to get that wonderful HD content that you're used to getting kind of virtually here. Um, uh, taking, you know, getting used to receiving it virtually, whether it's on your computer or phone, maybe iPad, you use the Bible study that way. Um, but you can um, also get uh, the conference that way too. virtual conference, all the wonderful HD content right to your phones, actually worship, and and not just and worship and uh, teaching plenaries pastor Borkhart and pastor Goodman are those and then some breakaways too, um, all sorts of good content all the people that would have been our plenary speakers basically did all of our breakaways uh, which includes me I did one of them so if you're excited about all this HT content well look for information on the uh, the virtual conference that's coming out this week very exciting times for higher things so um, now that I think we have at least a quorum to get us going, we're gonna we'll start um, we'll start get cooking here on Genesis. Um, so Pastor Borkhart told me uh, that he finished up uh, Esau selling his birthright for a bowl of soup. Um, so birthright there is. Um, sort of the inheritance, how that all gets laid out. Um, but today, maybe we'll get there, is uh, the blessing. So there's two pieces to the puzzle, um, sort of worldly goods and spiritual goods. Um, and that's what we're getting here. So Esau um, doesn't need his inheritance. I'll kind of get the, the ball rolling a little bit. Is um, He is he's sort of a wild man. Um, unlike Jacob, Jacob lives in tents. Esau likes to live out in the woods. So, um, I guess for l comparison, Esau is sort of like the trappers that we kind of learn about in history class, the, the, the frontier days. Um, the people would go out for, for skins, hunting all sorts of animals for pelts and meat. That's sort of Esau. Jacob, not so much. He wants to live, um, kind of in civilization around people um, and that's sort of the distinction between Jacob and Esau um, so let's get let's get the text up here and let's see here oh so then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew and he ate and drank and rose and went his way thus Esau despised his birthright um, uh, Brenda, I'm Pastor Aaron Fenker. I don't know if I mentioned that. I just assumed everyone knows who I am. I shouldn't assume that. 
Pastor Aaron Fanker. I'm the Dean of Theology for Higher Things. I am pitch hitting for Pastor Borkhart today, tomorrow, and Wednesday, I believe, um, as he prepares for the virtual conference. So what happens after Esau gets rid of his birthright? Well, there's a famine in the land, besides the first famine, which was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, to Gerar. So that's where he's going. Um, Abimelech, best name for a kid ever, best name for a son, my father the king, or my father is king. So um, I've been trying to save that one up. Uh, if that, that one's in the, on the back burner for, for boy names. Um, I don't know. I don't know why my, my wife wouldn't be on board with that one, but it sounds good to me. Um, anyway, so what goes on is, is Isaac's on his way and, um, Yahweh appears to him. Jesus appears to him. Uh, it's a good way of, of always remembering that when you see the Lord, um, is to default to this being Jesus before, well, he wasn't named Jesus then, I mean, from our perspective, but whatever. I think you get my meaning. Um, we get this also from Jesus before Abraham was, I am. So Jesus takes for himself the name of the God of the Old Testament. And so um, this would be Jesus appears to him. And what does he say to him? Um, he says, do not go down uh, to Egypt. Dwell in the land which I am telling you. That's what he says. Um, Sojourn in this land and I will be with you. I will bless you. Um, because to you and to your seed, I will or am giving all this land, all these lands, and I will establish the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. So, um, he repeats the promise. Uh, this, this is all similar language that he did, uh, with Abraham. I will be with you. I'll go with you. Um, it's the same promise actually he makes to us. I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. So the promise to Abraham and the promise to you and me is exactly the same. The Lord is, you know, sometimes we preachers of the gospel, you know, get called, you know, it's kind of like one trick ponies. Uh, but the Lord's like the OG one trick pony. He makes a promise to Abraham. I will be with you. Uh, and then uh, Jesus's sort of final promise is, I will be with you always. So it's it's all the same. Um, so he's going to establish this. He's going to make it firm uh, to Abraham and to his seed. And here again is the, is the promise to um, the one seed. Um, seed is always, or offspring is always singular. So they try and translate it collectively. If we were to read Paul in Galatians or Romans, he clarifies for us that this isn't a collective noun, that is like a group, like army is collective, that this is more referring to Christ. So to your seed, to you and to your seed. And then we get, um, there's one and yet many. One and yet many. So, and then 26 verse 4, I will multiply your seed like the stars of the heavens. I will give to your seed all these lands. Um... And all the nations, the Goye, the Goye Haaretz, will be blessed in your seed. So, um, here the, the seed is singular and yet will be multiplied, will be many. Um, and we see this also, kind of the language of um, Paul in Galatians chapter 3. Um, I will... Uh, as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have been clothed with Christ. Therefore, there is neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free, uh, neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to promise. And so that's the flow of the scriptures is that there's this one seed. And when you're in him, when you're, when you're with him and he's with you, well, then you're counted as that one seed. And you too are blessed. You are saved. You you receive the same promise that Abraham had. Um, I will bless, and in you all nations of the earth will be blessed. 
all the nations. Um, and so here, again, is the promise in would be Matthew 28, therefore go and make disciples of all nations. The promise of baptism, the promise of the Lord's word, the promise of being with you is really meant for all nations. And we see that here already in Genesis chapter 26, that Jesus, Yahweh, in the Old Testament is not just a God of the Israelites, though he is that. He's always have an, he, always, he always has an eye towards the nations, not to destroy them, but to save them. Okay, why? Uh, because um, Abraham um, listened to my voice. Um, obey is not quite the word. Um, it's always listen is always the, the, the turn of phrase. Um, yeah, I don't, obey here is not quite right. Um, there's words for that, um, but the Lord doesn't want a, a submission sort of relationship. He doesn't, he doesn't have almighty power that then he forces his, us to submit to. Um, that's, that's just not the sort of relationship he wants to have with the people he's saving. Um, he would speak and we would listen. Uh, we would cherish it. And that's the, that's the flow of the text. Um, so because Abraham listened to my voice and he um, guarded or kept or cherished my charge um, or the things that are my keeping, it's sort of an interesting turn of phrase, but what does that mean? My commandments... Um, my commandments, my um, well, it's statutes or, or rubrics, these are often, um, these, this word for statutes is often um, like liturgical statutes. Um, and my law, oh, my laws, oh, that's not good. Um, this is Torah, so this is instruction, my teaching. So here again, we have um, an echo in Matthew 28. To this very to this verse, teaching them to to guard all that I have commanded. Um, and so the we teaching them to cherish all that I have commanded. So here we have language that's very similar. So he listened to my voice and he guarded, cherished my commandments, my statutes, and my teachings, like laws. Doesn't really mean law. There's a word for that, but that's not that's not what that is. It's teaching. Um, so yeah, Pastor Borgert is right. There's there's words. Um, is uh, shamar is the Hebrew word which means to guard, or or keep. Um, keep means protect, um, and not necessarily obey. If it's ever translated obey, that's just not it's not in the word at all. Um, anyway. Uh, so Isaac dwells in Gerar. So, okay. He lives in Gerar. What happens in Gerar? Oh, we've seen this before. Something he picked up from dad. Probably something that mom and dad argued about for probably many years. Anyway, so the men of the place asked him in regards to his wife. And he said, she's my sister. Because he was afraid to say, "My she's my to say my wife," lest uh, the men of the place strike me on account of Rebecca, because she is of good appearance. So, yeah. Here again, just like Dad, um, apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Isaac is, um, well, hmm, just like dad, the Lord says, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you all these lands, all these kings. So all these kings and, and city states and kingdoms that all these people think they've got, it's not really theirs. It's yours. I'm going to give you the whole thing. Gerar, yours. Abimelech, the Philistines, all yours, Isaac is what the Lord is saying. I will bless you. I will, I will multiply you um, because I'm true to my promises. 
Um, and Isaac's response is, I'm afraid. And this is just sinners in a sinful world. Are, we are afraid. The Lord makes promises and we, don't e we either don't want to listen or we don't believe them. We think we have to work it out on our own. And when we learn to work it out on our own, we just do what we learn from our parents. Um, it's, it's sort of like the hymn. Um, oh, what is the hymn? Maybe Pastor Borger can help me out. Um, In the shattered bliss of Eden. Fallen children learning lessons fallen parents taught. Um, um, so there's that playing itself out in Isaac. So the way that we see our parents sort of turn from the Lord is the same way we turn from the Lord. And that's what Isaac does. I'm afraid they're going to kill me because of Rebecca because she's beautiful. Um, and so, well, let's see what comes of that. <sighs> and the days, uh, and it happened that the days were long for that, for him there. And what happens after that? Abimelech looks down, king of the Philistines, that's, he looks down, um, from, um, out of a window. And he sees, and behold, um, Isaac uh, laughing with Rebekah, his wife. So laughing with, um, or the, the Greek has it, is paizonta, is uh, amusing oneself. Um, and here I would say they're probably... Um, they're probably flirting a bit, would be my guess, is sort of the, the what they're trying to capture. So you see them interacting and joking with each other in a way where um, it's not just joking or laughing. You can just tell there's an intimate relationship between them. And Abimelech knows what's going on. It's not It's not hard to figure out the way that they're acting together. And so Abimelech calls Isaac and says... Uh, look, she's your wife. Um, maybe that would be so caressing. I don't. Uh, caressing is is an interesting take on it because um, the the he the Hebrew is the it's the same root of Isaac's name, so Yitzchak. Mitzachek. So he, I, the, Isaac means he laughs. So laughter is laughing with Rebecca. Caressing sort of adds a, a physical dimension to it that I don't think is, is necessarily there in the Hebrew word. Um, I mean, Hebrew has lots of euphemisms for that. There it is, Pastor Borkhardt, help me out. Fallen Adam's children learning lessons fallen parents taught. That's Isaac. But he can't hide his feelings for Rebecca, and he ends up laughing with her, flirting with her, and um, calls him like, um, "Why'd you? How could you say she's my sister?" And Isaac said to him, uh, "Because I said, lest I die on her account because of her." Oh, and Abimelech said. What is this you have done to us? It would have been easy for one of the people to lie with your wife and you and and bring upon us guilt. And guilt would be brought upon us. And you would have brought guilt upon us. Um, and so Abimelech commands all the people, whoever touches this man or his wife shall surely die. Um, so the, the king issues an edict 
He's not unrighteous, as I'm sure Isaac supposes. Um, and so, yeah. So what does Isaac do? Well, he lives in the land. Um, Isaac sows seed in the land. And um, it came out, uh, and it reaped in that same year um, a hundredfold. The Lord Yahweh blessed him. Um, so how does the Lord bless him? Because that's what the Lord said. The Lord's going to do what he says. He's going to keep Isaac safe, even though Isaac's a, a moron. Let's just be honest. This is like, it's terrible. It's honestly terrible. And this is, this should actually be for our comfort. Like Luther, I mean, I kind of get what he, what he, why he does what he does in his commentary to put the best construction on the patriarchs. Because there are fathers in the faith, and we don't really want to, you know, throw them under the bus or anything. But we also don't want to whitewash their sin. It'd be like trying to put the best construction on, um, it's like David and Bathsheba. There's no way around the, the sin of that situation. And I would say it's the same here with Abraham and Isaac. There's no way around the sinful situation. And w why would we desire to do that? We don't want to magnify this sin. It's not good. But the reality is the Lord saves sinners. Okay? Abraham and Isaac aren't saved because they're righteous. In fact, we are given example after example after example of them being unrighteous. They're not saved because they had awesome faith. They obvious, Isaac obviously didn't in this case. He was afraid. Fear is the opposite of of a faith or uh, fear is the opposite of love for God because perfect love casts out fear as first John tells us and this should be for our comfort when we have lives that are you know if we would say like well I don't match up to the patriarchs of the faith I don't match up to a an Abraham or an Isaac I don't match up to a Peter or a Paul we can look at their lives of what we're told in the scriptures and we can go no they were sinners. And that's what that's who the Lord saves. He came to save and seek that which is lost. He came to give his life as a ransom for many. It is not the, the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. And the Lord comes to be Isaac's physician, to heal him, to save him, to bless him. That's what it's all about. And we should take comfort in that. Not to magnify and say, well, I can sin like, you know, Isaac or anything. No, that's not the point. The point is that if your sins are like Isaac's or not like Isaac's, it doesn't matter what sins you have. The Lord will save you because the Lord saved Isaac. He was with him. Even in the midst of, of this, uh, this doubt and unbelief, the Lord was there for Isaac to, to protect him, to keep him safe, to bless him, to save him, um, which is the true blessing of God. Um, is saving him. Okay, so, and the man became great, and he, this is a very interesting, uh, 26 verse 13, and the man became rich and gained more and more until he became very wealthy. Now he became great until he was really great, um, and he, he sort of walks, uh, it's like wherever he goes and whatever he does, it, he's awesome at it. And what does he have? Well, he's got possessions of flocks and herds and many servants. And so the Philistines envied him. Now, oh, here we go. Now it's things not good. Now the Philistines had stopped and filled with earth all the wells that his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham, his father. So this is letting us know that something not good is coming. There's always those things. In Bible stories. Um, David and Bathsheba starts off with, um, in the time of year the kings go to war, David sent uh, David sent Joab, but David stayed in the palace. It's not good. It's not going to end well. Um, or in Exodus, there was a man whose mother was an Israelite, but whose father was Egyptian. Like, well, that's probably not a good story. And here again, 
We've got, oh, Isaac is blessed. Isaac is blessed. So much so that he's envied. And then you go, well, okay, natural. Well, they filled with well, dirt the wells. Oh, so this is going to be an argument about land and stuff. If there's any questions, because I move quick. Um, please post them. If there's a way to boost the audio, that would be helpful. Well, if you give me a minute, we'll do this. I will do my best. Let's do it this way. Maybe this will be a little bit better. Maybe that'll be better. Turn up the volume. Turn up the volume. Hopefully that's better for you. All right, let's get back to the text. Hopefully that's a little bit better for you. Um, Abimelech said, uh, go away from us, for you are much mightier than we are. So Isaac went from there and encamped in the valley of Gerar and settled there. So he's still close to Gerar. And Isaac dug again the wells of water that had been dug in the days of Abraham, his father, which the Philistines had stopped after the death of Abraham. And he gave them the names that his father had given them. Okay. So Isaac is always is just living where Abraham has lived. And here again, we have this um, sort of what when, when Rebecca was found to be you know, for Isaac as a wife, um, he was Isaac was not allowed to go anywhere. He had to stay in the land. Um, this, as we'll see, this little bit of information is not shared with um, I, Isaac. Doesn't kind of hold to this, but he, but we sort of see it a little bit. He's living where Abraham lived. Um, gave him the same names, but. When Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found there a well of spring. A spring of spring water. Uh, the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, The water is ours. So he called the name of the well um, Essek, contention, because they contended with him. They, then they dug another well, and they quarreled over that also. So he called that, uh, what is it? Enmity, sitna. It's a weird. It's a weird word. And he moved from there and dug another well, and they did not quarrel over it, so he called its name, um, Rehoboth, saying, "For now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land." Rehoboth is um, spacious. Uh, made room for us. He. Uh, and from there, he went to Beersheba. Okay. So there he's moving around and having trouble finding a spot. So what kind of... Well, I thought the land was mine, Lord. Well, all in the Lord's timing. Um, all this is type and shadow for the coming seed, um, whose kingdom is not of this world. So this land being the people of Israel's... Um, is for the sake of the Christ. Uh, it's for no other purpose. It's not for, you know, anything else than that. Um, and so why is the, there all this trouble? Um, I believe it was to Abraham that the Lord said, well, because the, the, um, the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. Uh, so there's, there's judgment coming for, for people who want to reject the preaching of the gospel, the preaching of the promise that Abraham preaches, that Isaac preaches, because that's where we are right now. It's right here. And Yahweh appeared to him at night um, and said to him, I am the God of Abraham, your father. Do not be afraid, for I am with you and will bless you and multiply your seed uh, on account of my servant, uh, Abraham. So, and he built an altar there and called on the name of Yahweh and pitched his tent there. 
and uh, Isaac's servants cut a, um, dug a well there. So Isaac sets up shop in Beersheba, uh, where um, he calls on the name. He sets up an altar, sets up a church. He was not allowed to set up a church in those other places. And that's what's really going on, is that the Am uh, Abimelech and the people of Gerar sort of force Isaac out. They look at his worldly possessions, because of his worldly possessions, reject the preaching that he has. So that in every place that he would try and set up shop, which isn't just him living there, but setting up an altar and a place to call on the name of Yahweh, where he would um, sacrifice and preach, uh, where he would preach the promises. Um, that's all taken away from Isaac. He's not allowed to have that. And that's the move uh, that we see in um, with Abraham. And it's the move that you would see um, when it comes to the Exodus as well. That the Lord just wants, uh, you know, the, the, the word to Pharaoh is that my people just want to go out and worship. And Pharaoh won't even let them do that. It's like, can they go out there and worship? It's not even at the start. I mean, the Lord knows, like, I'm going to bring them completely out of Egypt. But in the way that it's working out in the day to day, it's that Pharaoh let my people go so they can serve me. They can worship me. And Pharaoh's like, no, I don't know who Yahweh is. Why do I care? And it's the same thing with Abimelech. Get out of here, Isaac. We don't want your kind around here. You're, one, you're more powerful than us. And two, um, we don't really care for the God you're preaching. I mean, and what kind of God do you really believe in? Because you tried to pass off your wife as your sister. Um, and the promise is, well, the Savior's coming to save sinners like me. I'm, yeah, I'm not, it's not good. Anyway. Um, so Abimelech shows up. Of course he does. Journeys to him from Gerar. And Ah, um, Ahuzath, his advisor and Fecal, the commander of his army. Well, this is a meeting now, isn't it? Um, get out of here. We don't want you around. And then I'm going to come find you um, and bring my general with me and my his chief advisor. I'll bring my chief advisor. I'm bringing the prime minister. I'm the king and I'm bringing the prime minister and the, uh, the, gen the chief general too. Okay. Isaac said to them, why are you coming to me, seeing that you hate me and have sent me away from you? I mean, it's, Isaac's a little bold. They said, we plainly see that the Lord has been with you. So we said, let there be a sworn pact between us, between you and us, and let us cut a covenant with you. Make a covenant. The word there is cut, and we know why, because of the, uh, the vision that Abraham had. How we cut those animals in two. It's the same way. So, um, yeah, death to the one who breaks it. Um, that you will do us no harm, just as we have not touched you and have done to you nothing but good and have sent you away in peace. Um, you are now um, blessed of Yahweh or blessed by Yahweh. Yahweh. So they made a feast and they ate and drank. So t they have fellowship together, um, which is, uh, and you see Isaac here is very speedy to, to do because as God's people, um, is it Peter? This, oh no, it's Paul. It's Paul in Romans. As far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. So Isaac isn't going around trying to be at enmity with um, Abimelech or the people of Gerar. He's trying to live at peace. He wants to be at peace with them. He wants to just set up shop where he can live and preach the gospel, um, which also fits with what Paul says in 1 Timothy, that we should pray for people in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life. This is good and pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. And for this purpose, as Paul continues, I was 
um, established as a preacher. So it's the same thing here. All the things we have in the New Testament are foreshadowed and echoed here. It's all one book. It's like Star Wars, everyone. It's like Star Wars, I guess, or whatever other movie series you wanna you wanna pick. Um, it's not um, the Old Testament isn't Lord of the Rings, for example, in the New Testament um, Star Wars. That that's not how it works. It's it's um, it's like part one and part two of the same movie. Um, in the morning they arose early and they swore a man to his brother. They exchanged oaths. Uh, it sort of plays it down. Exchanged oaths sounds very... What do you say? Just sort of plain. Just doesn't sound very good. And Isaac... Uh, so sends them on their way and they went out from him in peace so this exchanged oaths literally it says and they swore a man to his brother so in a worldly sense they consider themselves brothers that's the it's it's not just they exchanged oaths they, they really did view themselves as as brothers uh, living in the same land truly at peace as as a family would be um yeah they're not really related but that's the, the the force they really are at peace um exchanged oaths and so this is how we should strive to be with with those around us as well as christians we want to preach the gospel we don't have any animosity towards anybody we just want to preach um the forgiveness of sins uh, in Jesus's name and that includes having to preach repentance um, because well if you're going to preach the forgiveness of sins what well, we have to preach you know what sins are we saved from and the Lord lays both out for us in his word he lays out what the sins are and the sins he saved us from because he's the Lord who saves sinners he gives us the diet like a doctor physician um, the sick need a doctor and the doctors give di a diagnosis this is what's wrong with you um, and this is the treatment. And that's what Jesus says. That's what the Lord does in the scriptures. This is your sin. And this is the forgiveness of that sin. One for you in the death and resurrection of the, of the Son of God. And delivered out in his word and in his gifts, his sacraments. Uh, which is uh, the flow of the blessing to Abraham. In you, in your seed, all nations of the earth will be blessed. It's why then Jesus has that promise. Um, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth, therefore go make disciples of all nations. So God saves sinners, all sinners, from every nation and tribe, from the people of Gerar um, to, to you and me. It doesn't matter who they are. That seed is for them. Jesus is for them. His death for them. And, and it's all worked out for us in our day in, in the preaching of the gospel and, the, in, and in the sacraments. So that then, uh, that's all we're about. And as far as it depends on us, we'll be at peace. Pray for our leaders. Vote. We'll even make, we'll even make treaties. Look at this. If, if we were ever in such a crazy time, it seems like it'd be like Mad Max, you know, post-apocalyptic time. If we're living like Isaac, you know, kind of off in our own tent somewhere, uh, why not set up a, a treaty with people? Why not? Go for it. Um, but all that really matters is trying to find that place uh, where an altar can be set up, where there can be calling upon the Lord's name, where there can be preaching in his name, the preaching of uh, repentance and forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name. So that same day, Isaac's servants came and told him about the well that they had dug and said to him, We found water! He called it uh, Sheba. Therefore, the name of the city is Be'er Sheba to this day. And Sheba is like the Hebrew word for oath or seven. So, this is the little time of Isaac in Gerar. And then we get a few verses about more. Now we're back to Esau. And Esau was 40 years old. And he took a wife, Judith, 
the daughter of, of Baeri, the Hittite, for a wife. And, um, and Basimoth, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite. So he gets he's two wives. Never good. Never good. Um, one, well, this is like doubly not good. And not just because there's two wives. Um, so we saw that with Abraham. Abraham marrying Sarah and Hagar. Not good. Didn't work out well. It was not, there was, it was not paradise for, for Abraham. Lots of contention, lots of fighting. Isaac still has problems, sinners, but he has one wife. Uh, and here's Esau. He takes two wives, but they're Hittite wives. So not, um, not like Isaac found a wife from his own people, uh, but a foreign wife. And it's not just about foreigners. That, that would be to miss the point. The point here is other gods. That's the problem. Because um, they made life bitter for Isaac and Rebekah. Um, so uh, they were bitterness of spirit for Isaac and Rebekah. So they made life bitter. That's close enough. They, they were a bitter, a spirit, uh, bitterness of spirit to them. Um, or they became, well, no, no, it would be became. They became bitterness of spirit for Isaac and Rebecca. So for what reason? Uh, we're not really told, but anytime the other nations are mentioned, it usually has to do with their gods. That's always what's going on. And we'll see that that even happens uh, when we get later on to the wa many wives of Jacob. Again, not good. Doesn't end. It doesn't end well. Um, well, I mean, it ends well, but I mean, it's not like, you know. If this is any indication for the guys out there who are like, you know, one wife, great, two wives, awesome. Uh, no, no, no. It's not. It's not awesome at all. It doesn't end well. There's always trouble, and there's trouble here for Esau, because he has these Hittite daughters, and as we'll see tomorrow, because I'm out of time. Um, as we'll see tomorrow, this is actually kind of a big problem with who Esau is in relation in the family dynamic of where he fits in this preaching of the gospel within the family of Isaac. So with that, again, keep looking for the virtual conference. It's coming out this week. And so, um, I thank you for your time. Um, I look forward to teaching tomorrow on Isaac and giving out the, the blessing to Jacob and a blessing also to Esau, but sort of consolation prize. Anyway, with that, I would hope that the Lord would bless you today and I'll see you again tomorrow. Have a good day.